Valence shell electron pair repulsion is a part of the valence bond theory that helps us understand the shapes of molecules. Uh, so it explains the reasons for the angles that we find. And what it does is it looks at the Lewis dot structure and counts the number of areas of electron density and basically says electrons repel each other. So it's going to go into this shape to minimize repulsion. First thing you have to do is draw a proper Lewis dot structure, which I'm assuming you know how to do. Next, what you do is you count the areas of electron density. One non-bonding pair is one area, and each of a single, double, or triple bonding, triple bond is all one area because they're all in one place. So a triple bond is not three areas, it's one area. And then a specific number of areas gives a specific shape. So let's look at an example. Here is hydrogen cyanide. If I look at this, you can see that there is two areas of electron density on the carbon and two on the nitrogen. So what we do is we say, how can two areas get as far away from each other? Well, it goes into a 180 degree bond angle, which we call linear structure. So here's a picture of what it would look like. 180 here, 180 here between the triple bond and the non-bonding pair. So it's a very linear molecule. If you were to pick up the hydrogen and wag this around, it would be like a little stick. So any atom that has two areas of electron density on it will find that those two areas of electron density have an angle between them of 180. And we say the electron geometry of that atom is linear. And we would draw it out as a linear structure. Sulfur trioxide gives you three areas of electron density around the sulfur. It gives you four on oxygen one, three on oxygen two, and four on oxygen three. Of course, we know about resonance, and so this kind of messes with this structure. This is an inorganic molecule with um, what you would find, uh, you would have to take into consideration all of the resonance structures of this, but we're going to just use this for uh, reasons of counting and figuring out the hybridization of uh, the um, the shape, the electron geometry, and not really worry about the resonance structures that are possible. So three areas on the sulfur and on oxygen too can get away from each other best with 120 degree angles. So let's look at those two. Here would be sulfur with the three areas of electron density, and here would be the oxygen with three areas of electron density. And what we actually find is oxygen has those non-bonding pairs in the same plane as the sulfur and stuck out at 120 degree angles to that double bond. And what we find is that the, uh, the bond angle, the sulfur oxygen, so oxygen, sulfur oxygen bond angle is 120 degrees. Kind of neat what we find. It exactly represents what we find from the Lewis dot structure. So for any atom that has three areas of electron density, what we find is the angle between those areas, between the bonds or the bonds and the non-bonding pairs, is 120 degrees, and it gives us a trigonal planar structure. If we go to four areas of electron density, uh, in this molecule or in this molecule, it doesn't matter if it's bonds or non-bonding pairs. Still, what you have is four areas of electron density, and these go into a tetrahedral shape. And so here is the tetrahedral shape that we see. And uh, you can see that the bond is, uh, the bond angle is 109.5. With the nitrogen, that non-bonding pair up here actually is kind of bulky, and so it pushes the bond angle between the hydrogen to nitrogen, hydrogen, uh, a little smaller than 109.5, but it's still a tetrahedron. So what we find is that any atom that has four areas of electron density has a bond angle uh, of 109.5, and it goes into what's called a tetrahedral electron geometry. And we draw it with a tetrahedral structure. I have a drawing of this for you. 
but it would be that the nitrogen is at the peak of the pyramid and the hydrogens are at the base of a triangle, the triangle of the base of the pyramid. Any time you have a tetrahedron with one non-bonding pair, you're going to have a molecular geometry of trigonal pyramidal. Uh, Any time you have two non-bonding pairs on that tetrahedral electron geometry, you're going to get a molecular geometry of bent. And of course, a trigonal planar with one non-bonding pair pyramid, excuse me, one non-bonding pair, you're going to get a bent molecular geometry.